Over the last five years, I've been on a journey to simplify my life and today I'm going to share 10 easy ways to own less stuff, which has really helped with the simplifying process. Schedule regular times to declutter and declutter often. I've found that this is the easiest way to own less stuff and that's just to go through my home all the time on the regular and grab the things that I know we don't need anymore and donate them or declutter them out of my house. And if you're not the type of person who just thinks of doing this all the time, maybe you would want to write this in your planner or on a calendar just as a reminder to spend a little bit of time decluttering. So just glancing in there really quick, I found five things to declutter. In maybe 20 minutes yeah. of going through some stuff. I'm really shocked actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm surprised, really surprised because when we talked this morning, you told me, I don't think there's gonna be much of anything. Yeah, I thought a couple little vases, but. This is a lot. This is a lot, and it's stuff that I've been ignoring. Find a good place to donate your items. Sometimes it's easier to let go if you have a place that you know uh, can resell your items and maybe the proceeds go to charity or whatever makes you feel good, but I found a local secondhand store that the donations I know are going to a good cause and that makes me really happy to donate there. And also finding places where you could sell items if you feel your items are worth something, then maybe figuring out how to do Facebook Marketplace or eBay and just figure that out because once you have it set up and you realize it's relatively easy to do, it will make the decluttering process a lot easier. Embracing the space instead of the stuff. So this can take a little bit of time, but when I first started decluttering, it felt kind of weird to have open space in my home. That might sound funny to some people, but to have the counters with nothing on them, it kind of looked odd at first, but over time I got used to that and I started to embrace the extra space in my home and not feel as if every single wall needed a table on it or every corner needed a chair and I just accepted that open space rather than having all the stuff. This is a fun way to own less stuff and that is to try to look at your home as if it isn't your home. Pretend like you just walked into somebody else's home and what would you get rid of or what looks odd to you. I think we get so used to how our homes look. It's like clutter blindness. We just do not see the clutter. We are so used to having um, a canister with a bunch of stuff in it or some decor on a table that we literally do not see it. So I would just recommend trying to see your home from a different light and a different point of view. And I know we all walk into some people's homes and we say, whoa, they have so much stuff. Or we walk into a Airbnb and say, wow, there's nothing in here. And that's because we're looking at it with a fresh perspective that sometimes when we live in our home, we just don't have that perspective. So by doing that, it can really help. Next is to challenge yourself in some way. This could be the one in one out policy. So when you buy something new, you declutter something in its place. It could be what a lot of people call the quarantine box or the wait and see box, which is to pack up some stuff that you are unsure of if you wanna keep or not and put it away, put it in your garage. And if you don't find yourself wanting those items for a long time, then you can just declutter them without any fear. Another one is to challenge yourself for maybe 30 days or maybe the whole year to get rid of a certain amount of items per day. I just had someone comment on one of my blog posts that she was challenging herself to get rid of 10 items every single day, no matter how small or large. She said it could be a piece of furniture, something really large, or even a pencil. But she was trying to get rid of 10 items every single day for the whole year. And again, that's the slow and steady process, which I personally love, but it's a great way to own less stuff. A question I love to ask is how does this item make me feel? This kind of goes along the lines of the KonMari question of does this spark joy? I could never really understand that question, but when I started to think of it in a different way, which is how does this item make me feel? 
it was really easy for me to decide what to keep and what to get rid of. So if it was a piece of clothing, how do I feel in these clothes? Do they fit? Do I like the way I look? Do I like the way I feel? And when it, even when it comes to my home, is this item annoying me? Am I constantly having to put it away or find a place for a certain item? This could even be a piece of decor in my home. How does it make me feel? Am I happy when I look at it? Or is it just annoying something I have to dust and move around and try to find a place for? So that's a really good question to ask. If you can't wrap your mind around, does it spark joy? It's just how does the item make you feel? It's nice, but it's it's like don't go out of the house in it. But I have too many of those. let me wear it out of the house. <laughs> well, you were desperate. <laughs> and this just doesn't look good on me. I just, I don't know. So I'm just only keeping things I really like and I know I'm going to wear. This tip has stopped me from buying so many different things and that is just to make a list of what I think I want to buy and wait and see. So I sometimes get these things pop in my head, oh I think I want a new this or that, whatever it is, fill in the blank. And what I do now is I just write a list and sometimes I'll research online how much is the item, where do I get it, and then I'll just wait and see do I really need this item. And a lot of the time I will completely forget that I wrote the list of things and I'll find it a week or two later and think, oh, you know what? I don't even want any of that stuff anymore. So that's a great way to stop yourself from just running out and making an impulse purchase just to jot it down and see if you still want it in a week or a month's time. If I decide that I do want these items, I make sure to bring my list. I do a little research ahead of time online to find the best prices and where I wanna shop for these items. And then I make sure that I stick to my list and I avoid all impulse purchases at all costs. Sometimes I will even take photos and make another list before I buy any additional items. Another great way to stop yourself from running out and shopping is to shop your own home first. So I do this when it comes to decorating, I do this when it comes to organizing, I shop my own home, I see what I can move around to make a room look completely redecorated, I look around to see what items I could shift around and what boxes could be reused in a different way to organize my home, and I just see what I already have because sometimes I find things that I didn't even realize I had maybe in my garage or in my boys room where they are no longer using it and it can be repurposed for a different space in my home. I have several videos on how to refresh your home without buying anything so I'll make sure to link those down below for you to check out. Look for the obvious to declutter. I think sometimes we get caught up with feeling we need to pull everything out of a closet and spend weeks decluttering and going through our whole entire home where I personally love the slow and steady process which is starting by looking for the obvious. When I first started decluttering my home, I went in my kitchen and I just got rid of the duplicate items. I had three strainers. <laughs> I realized I only really needed one strainer and so I got rid of the two extra ones I had but it's as simple as that. Just going through and looking for the duplicate items, looking for broken items, items that you no longer enjoy, or clothing items that don't fit. By decluttering the obvious, it helps us to make our decluttering muscle stronger so we can dig in deeper and let go of more. For example, this coffee mug that was hidden behind all these other cups that no one ever used and hadn't used for probably five years or maybe longer. Borrowing things is a great way to own less. And I know some people are against borrowing things, but if you have a really close family or friends that you borrow something once in a blue moon, I'm thinking parties, things like that where you don't need the item very often. Maybe you're having a lot of people over and you don't have enough chairs, so you may borrow some outdoor chairs. This is what I mean by borrowing things. I also like to use the library and little libraries where again, it is a 
borrowing type system where you're dropping things off, picking things up, and you don't have to store and own these items forever. You can find buy nothing groups on Facebook, and there's a lot of things for free on Facebook Marketplace where if you just need something for a short amount of time, you can find it, use it, and then put it back on to Facebook Marketplace for someone else to find. I hope some of these tips were helpful. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button and you can click right here to watch my next video. See you in the next one. Bye.